uh, Viviani was here early. Thank you. And um, Micah Goddess, Gina, Sally, Maria girl, thank you guys for being here. And um, I have to tell you, this is um, Lady Silver's request. And I was really blown away when I looked. I mean, I knew who Edward R. Murrow was from, you know, years and years ago as a little kid. And when we had black and white TV, <laughs> you guys probably don't remember that. <laughs> but us oldsters do. And um, Edward R. Murrow was one of those people like a Walter Cronkite. In fact, he hired, tried to hire Walter Cronkite because at one time, Edward R. Murrow was the VP and a network vice, pre vice president, rather, and um, he ran CBS at a time way back when. Um, he was actually born in 1908, so you can imagine what time frame he operated in. It was on black and white TV, and he really started on radio. So, you know, I just want to impress upon all of you how important and significant he was as a journalist for the time period that he was active. And if you get a chance, go to Wikipedia and read about him because it'll really blow your socks off. So I was really happy that Lady Silver came up with this request um, because he's really amazing. Um, so I'll begin channeling this message from Edward R. Murrow, who was a journalist now. As I have a, yes, I have a message for you all. In my day as a journalist, we were the front line of information providers. There were none other. And we held this responsibility of infer oh sorry and we held this responsibility dearly in our hearts with honor to bring only balanced fairness by reporting only the facts best um, the, as best we knew them as a war correspondent i felt that responsibility strongly it was a labor of love honor and duty we felt for the United States and the world that depended on us, the journalists, to deliver the truth. If an opinion was made, it was an editorial and detailed as such, so as not to confuse anyone. To demonstrate the power of our reporting the truth, you have only to look at the H.G. Wells War of the World radio broadcast in 1938, which was misunderstood as the truth in real time, where people heard it on the radio and believed it was really happening. That was an invasion from Mars scenario, if you remember the book. And he says, this is the power of journalism. Today, we see no honor, duty, and responsibility, or rather, you have to look high and low to find those who still believe the truth is the golden nugget that you are searching for in order to inform the people of what is going on. Today's journalism is a hobby, a useful tool towards someone's agenda, and that agenda is not for the truth, but rather to serve themselves and their own goals. Big corporations, countries, and groups have been disseminating fear and untruths that do not serve humanity. This is what I wish to say here today that until truth becomes once again that golden nugget, that treasure discovered, that journalists move to share 
from a place of honor, duty, and responsibility. Until then, you will have to use your discernment. Or, at the very least, listen to your inner voice for the truth. This is something that we all must do to feel what is in resonance with our hearts as truth. Only you individually can discover what that is. While you are here on earth, what you believe becomes your reality. So therefore, my friends, choose your beliefs wisely and may they come from your hearts. With deep love to you all, this is Edward R. Murrow signing off for now in the one light, in the oneness. End of transmission. So I know, I mean, that was so powerful. Many of you probably have no clue what the world, uh, uh, world, War of the Worlds, rather, the H.G. Wells broadcast was all about. Well, H.G. Wells wrote the book, War of the Worlds, and as a precursor to the reformatted radio broadcast of the book, a series, you know, they were going to produce. The night before, they decided, H.G. Wells decided he would introduce it by, I'll just read this because <clears throat> it tells. This is in 1938, the day, the, the um, day before Halloween. Wells and his Mercury Theater on air had performed a radio adaption of H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, converting the 40-year-old novel into fake news bulletins describing a Martian invasion of New Jersey. Some listeners mistook bulletins for the real thing, and their anxious phone calls to police newspapers newspaper offices and radio stations convinced many journalists that the show had caused nationwide hysteria. So, I mean, this was big. You can Google that and look at it. And it scared the heck. I think you can even get sound bites of that broadcast and hear how scary that was. So, just saying that even though it was the night before they were going to start that series, it was just an introductory um, intro to it. And it's, it's just people thought it was true because they heard it on the radio. This was the power of journalism in the day because what was said on the radio was true. It was news. When a journalist broke a story, nobody said, oh, they're lying, it's fake news. They believed it. So there was a code of honor. There was a responsibility to report the truth, not the truth as you'd like to see it, not the truth that mm, you wish was so, but the actual truth. So a little bit more about um, uh, Edward R. Murrow. He was known for, so he, he was born in 1908 and died in 1965 at 57 years old. He was known for on-the-spot radio reports from London and other locations in Europe during World, World War II. So um, a series, also known for a series of TV news reports that led to the censure of U.S. Senator Joseph McCarthy. And you know about the McCarthy. <laughs> There's looking for communists everywhere, putting people in prison and, oh, I can't even go there. But anyway, uh, he was also the VP, as I said, of the network and head of CBS. Uh, his presence and personality shaped the newsroom. So that's a little bit about that. But if you have time, go to Wikipedia and you will be really amazed at how wonderful this human being was. And, you know, I do know 
I think he comes through Susan Lynn, right? <laughs> Sitting there smoking. And you can tell he would definitely be just the same old news guy, news journalist. Really still into it. You can tell by his message. So think about that. <laughs> But anyway, thank you so much, Lady Silver, for coming up with that uh, request, because I was totally thrilled at how accessible he was and ready to give us a message. And, um, oh, warrior girl, a powerful message. All of the news channels are now owned by five different corporations. They started buying out all of the small owned ones in 1985. Wow. Yeah, it gives me the chills, right? Oh, thank you, Viviani. Great message. Thank you. It really was. Um, uh, thanks, Viviani. Uh, yeah, it is a different day today when news is a soundbite that is trying to reach someone's agenda rather than a soundbite of a golden nugget of truth. Oh, I have to inform the world of this. I have to inform because they didn't have internet. They didn't have any of these fast ways of communication. The journalists on radio were the front lines of you getting information. And they did take that, as I said over and over, <laughs> Responsib the responsibility they felt deeply. And I think they really learned a good, good ethics uh, while they were in journalism school. So, oh. Thank you, Micah Goddess. Um, yeah, I thank you so much. Uh, it it really, yeah, it's it was a beautiful message. So I'm so thankful all of you guys um, were here to to listen to this live because I asked him to step in and share that energy with you all, and um, yeah. Sally, the issue we face is how to bring our agendas together, right? Yeah, it's really true. We have to coalesce together. And uh, yeah, so thank you all for being here. I love you all. And I so appreciate this. And <clears throat> thank you for your support. We're, you know, not that few, maybe 14 more subscribers away from the next drawing <laughs> for a free Akashic record reading. So um, stay tuned. Thank you guys. I love you. Mwah. You give me energy and make me want to continue doing this. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.